Thank you to Voxu for sponsoring this video. More on them later. Hey Explorers, are you planning your first trip to Universal Studios Japan? Well, you're in luck. In this video, I'm gonna go over what you need to know to plan your first trip. With that said, here's what you need to know. The most important thing is to buy your tickets and express passes before your visit. They go on sale two months in advance. Don't wait until the day of. You risk things being sold out and also you're just going to be wasting your precious time in the park. The first place for you to try is, of course, the Universal Studios Japan website where you can buy your park tickets and your express passes. Now, a lot of people run into issues with credit cards, so your credit card may or may not work. You're just going to have to try. It's different for everybody. If it doesn't work, you can try third-party websites like Kluke, which I highly recommend. I have bought tickets from them many, many times, and it has always worked. For more information on the tickets, I'll put a link in the description that goes into a little more detail, more than what I'm going to cover in this video. Before we move on with more tips, let's take a quick snack break with Hello Kitty and Boxu. Boxu is a premium Japanese snack box. They work with family businesses all over Japan to curate and deliver the most authentic and unique treats that the world has to offer. And now they've teamed up with Sanrio's iconic Hello Kitty and Friends to create the cutest snack box you've ever seen. The theme of this box is Okinawa Beach Party. It invites you to join Hello Kitty and friends for a fun-filled day at the beach. Not only does the box come with 20 plus snacks and an adorable friends guide, I mean look at that, that's so cute. It also comes with a Hello Kitty collectible that is exclusive. Look at this little lunch beach bag. It is beyond words cute. I love it. This Kumamoto watermelon gummy was one of my favorites and it's made with real watermelon juice and apparently Batsumaru brought them. It was good taste. These potato chips that Kuropi brought to the party are probably the best potato chips I've ever had in my life. The pure potato chips with Okosk sea salt. Delicious. To celebrate the launch, Boxu is giving you wonderful explorers an exclusive early bird discount on the Hello Kitty and Friends snack box. Click on the link in the description and use my code HelloExplorer to get $15 off your Hello Kitty box. This is the perfect gift for the Hello Kitty lover in your life. And if you want to try out this box and support my channel at the same time, click that link in the description. If it's within your budget, then the Express Pass is absolutely worth it. They are a little bit expensive and sometimes they can cost more than the park ticket itself. But if this is a once in a lifetime trip or you only make it out here every so often and you want to maximize your time, then getting the Express Pass to skip the lines and also get you into Super Nintendo World without having to do the whole timed entry thing, the Express Pass is definitely worth it. Don't worry, I'll talk about Super Nintendo World a little bit later. When you select your Express Pass, you're going to be assigned different time slots, so just keep that in mind. So once you buy Express Pass, it kind of dictates your day as to what attractions you're going to experience when. There are other types of Express Passes that include a ton of the rides, family-friendly rides. They also have ones for Halloween Horror Nights and Cool Japan. You just have to go through the website and see all the different ones available because there are quite a bit. I don't know what this is. The worst kept secret about Universal Studios Japan is that they open the park before its advertised opening time. That means if the park hours say 9 a.m. on the website, the park could open as early as 8 a.m. Now this does change. It depends on the day of the week, how busy it's supposed to be. Is it a holiday? Is it a weekend? Is it a weekday? They do change it pretty much every day. And the kicker is the time isn't publicly announced. So a good rule of thumb is to be there at least an hour before the advertised opening time. That way you can get into the park and just start your day early. If you get into the park early enough, you may be able to get into Super Nintendo World without a timed entry. And this is because the system isn't turned on yet. You can check the Universal Studios Japan app and it'll tell you if you need a timed entry or not. And based off of my experience, they turn on the system about 20 minutes after they start letting everybody in, but of course this can change at any time. Don't worry, if you notice that the system is turned on, you're going to be there early enough that you'll be able to get a timed entry anyway, so it just pays to be early. I'll explain more about Super Nintendo World later in the video, so don't you worry, I got you covered. If you're getting to Universal Studio Japan super early in the morning, then it makes sense to stay as close as possible. So you're gonna need a hotel, right? 
Well, I recommend staying at one of the many hotels that are right at Universal Studios Japan. There's quite a few to choose from and it can be a little bit overwhelming. I've stayed at every single hotel there and I have some recommendations for you. The first one is the Parkfront Hotel at Universal Studios Japan. This one is right in front of the park. You can get to the gates of the park from the hotel in less than two minutes. This is the closest hotel to Universal Studios Japan. The newly renovated Oriental Hotel Universal City is right in Universal City Walk. You can get to the front of the park in less than five minutes. It's nice and spacious and like I said it's newly renovated. Now if you want a hotel that has a spa in it, I love the Singulary Hotel and Sky Spa at Universal Studios Japan. It is kind of a mouthful <laughs> in terms of the name. It is right at the train station. It's a little bit further, and by further, I mean it's going to take an extra minute. One of my go-to hotels is the Art Hotel Osaka Bay Tower. This is not at USJ. It is a few stations away at Ben Tensho Station. I love that it's super convenient. It's connected to the Osaka Loop Line, and you can get it for a reasonable price at about 70 to 80 US dollars a night. Download the Universal Studios Japan app. It is going to be crucial for your day at the park and it's available in English. You're going to be able to check the attraction wait times, see the park map, look at the restaurants, and also get your timed entry for Super Nintendo World. Now the only thing you need to keep in mind is there is only Wi-Fi in the front of the park. If you go anywhere else in, inside the park, which you will, you're going to need something else like a portable Wi-Fi device, an eSIM, or a SIM card for your device. I'll put some recommendations in the description for you so you can go and check that out. One of the biggest reasons for you coming to Universal Studios Japan is probably to go to Super Nintendo World. So we're going to talk about how to get inside. Hi, Toad. <laughs> You need an additional reservation called the timed entry to get into Super Nintendo World. Without one, you're not going to be able to get in in most cases. So here's a real quick rundown of how to get one. You can buy an express pass that comes with the timed entry. So pick one of the express passes that has either Mario Kart or Yoshi as part of the express pass. It will come with a timed entry when you buy it. Once you have your ticket bought, scan your tickets into the Universal Studios Japan app. You can do this ahead of time. And then once you are inside the park, meaning everyone's park tickets are scanned into the park, you can go into the Universal Studios Japan app and then get yourself a timed entry for Super Nintendo World. Now, this should be the first thing you do once you get into the park because they do run out. Don't worry though, if they do run out, they also do a standby lottery. So let's say you get in a little bit later, like in the afternoon, there's a good chance there's going to be no more timed entries. So what you're going to do is go through the same process as getting a timed entry, but you're going to enter a lottery and then you select a time slot. Then you check the app and it'll tell you if you won or not. If you don't want to use your smartphone or don't have one, you can go to these kiosks that you'll find in front of Mel's Diner. All you have to do is scan everyone's tickets or annual passes in and just follow the prompts to get yourself a ticket. To get the most out of Super Nintendo World, you're going to have to buy a power-up band, which is an additional cost of 4,200 yen, which is about 35 US dollars. And you're going to need that so you can collect the coins, collect the stamps, and also the keys for Bowser Jr.'s challenge. If you have a power up band from Hollywood, it will work in Japan. You just have to sync it to the Universal Studios Japan app and also vice versa. I've done numerous videos on Super Nintendo World in more depth, so I'll put a link up here on the screen for you so you can go and watch those videos too. There's also these hidden Mario symbols to get the 8-bit characters. <laughs> Visit during the week and not during a holiday if you can. Typically, Tuesday through Friday are your best bets. And of course, double check the public holidays calendar to see if there are any public holidays happening in Japan because it'll be busy. If there's a public holiday on a Wednesday, it's going to be busy. The rule of thumb is avoid the weekends. The weekends are just always busy. Some of the major holidays that you should avoid are Golden Week, which is at the end of April into the beginning of May. Then we have the summer holidays like July and August. Just avoid it all, really. 
<laughs> and then we have the New Year's holiday. So right after December 25th, right until the first week of January, it's just, it's just going to be busy. March is also a really busy month because it is spring break for school kids. It's just going to be packed. The entire month of March is just packed. Uh, check out the wait times. There's a wait time board right here. You can also check it in the app, but this is easier to show. Draymond's 250 minutes. I don't think we're going to do that today. Jujutsu Kaisen 60, Mario Kart's 120, Yoshi's Adventure is 65, Harry Potter 160, Hippogriff 100, Despicable Me 110. Ooh. You can also check the blackout dates for the Universal Studios Japan annual pass. That's also a good indication of when it's going to be busy. One day is enough for most people visiting Universal Studios Japan, but if your main purpose is to go to Super Nintendo World, then I highly recommend doing one and a half days because they actually do sell a one and a half day park ticket. Or you can just do two to make it simple. Use those single rider lines. Here it is, Mario Kart. What is the wait time? 85 minutes and then 40 minutes for single rider. Always do single rider. Especially if you do not have an express pass. Now when you use the single rider lines, you can get through the queue usually a lot quicker and you're not gonna be riding with your friends, with your family. Just keep that in mind. There's no friends when it comes to single rider line. It's every man for himself. <laughs> So there are single rider lines for attractions like Despicable Me, Minion Mayhem, Space Fantasy The Ride, and also its overlay. The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man, 4K 3D The Ride. That is a long name. It's actually, it's, it's closing permanently next year in 2024. The Flying Dinosaur, highly recommended for The Flying Dinosaur. <laughs> same with Mario Kart Koopa's Challenge. It has the single rider line. Use that single rider line. And same with Jaws. Use it. Elmo's Go Go Skateboard. The only reason I, why I've ever rode that ride was because of the single rider line. Also, Hollywood Dream the Ride, Jurassic Park the Ride, and also Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. To further help you decide when to visit Universal Studios Japan, check that seasonal event calendar. Two of the most popular events is Cool Japan and Halloween Horror Nights. Cool Japan kind of runs almost all year and they kind of switch things out as the year goes on. In the past, they've done stuff with Sailor Moon. They've done things with Draymon, with Final Fantasy, Attack on Titan, Jujutsu Kaisen, and even Pokemon. Oh! Oh! If you ever wanted to know what Pikachu is full of, he's full of pizza, apparently. This is a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. It's very savory. Then when it comes to Halloween Horror Nights, that typically happens beginning of September until the beginning of November. And the best part is, it is included in your park ticket. You don't have to pay for anything extra. It's not like the US parks where it's a separate ticket. No, nope, it's all included in your day ticket. And some of the houses are even open during the day. How awesome is that? And then at night, the park transforms and it's terrifying and it's wonderful. And I love it. What is this? <laughs> oh, that is so unnerving. <laughs> Being scared is not your thing. There's also a family-friendly Halloween event that happens at the same time. <laughs> you can get your picture up here with them and everything. It's wonderful. Hello. Once Horror Nights finishes, then we move on to Christmas, which runs typically from the beginning of November until the first week of January, where it is such a spectacle. Oh, oh, there's Santa. I'm laughing at just how ridiculous the name is for this. This is a ho ho hot dog. It's Santa's butt. We're eating Santa's butt, you guys. They also do their New Year's event, which is a separate ticketed event where you can do the countdown, ring in the New Year at Universal Studios Japan. And I've done that once. And let me tell you, that is a party.
Happy New Year, Explorers. Make sure you check the attraction closures. They usually update them around six months ahead of time. That way you know if there's attraction that you really want to do is open or not, and you're not left disappointed. One thing that throws a lot of people is there is no re-entry on your day ticket. So if you leave the park, you cannot come back in. That is just Universal Studios Japan's official policy. Now, a way to get around this is if you upgrade your ticket to an annual pass. And of course, that's really only worth it if you're applying to visit three, four or more days. Don't worry too much about the language barrier. Now, most things are available in English, like the signage and restaurant menus and even the map. But don't expect all the team members to speak English. There will be people that do, but not everybody does. So it's a good idea to learn some pleasantries in Japanese, like please and thank you. I've done a video on a basic Japanese phrases that you should know. I'll put a link up on the screen there so you can go and check that out. It's also a good idea to have Google Translate on your phone to help you with translating things that are a little bit more complicated. While Google Translate isn't perfect, it should be able to get the point across. And also you can try other services like Deeple. With that said, some things are only available in Japanese, so you're going to have to know the language pretty well to be able to access it. An example is the treasure hunt with the spy family event that is only in Japanese. It's not in any other language. And also buying the tickets for the One Piece premiere show that is only in Japanese as well. Just keep in mind that some things are inaccessible unless you know Japanese. It's just the way it is. <laughs> Expect long lines for the food. Yes, the restaurants have long lines, especially the counter service restaurants. If you want to avoid the lines as much as possible, try and eat during the off peak periods. So meaning eat before lunch or in the middle of the afternoon or later in the evening. But just keep in mind later in the evening, some of the restaurants do close early. So just uh, keep that in mind. Yeah, the pizza's great. Oh, I almost slid it right into the lens. That would have been terrible. Pizza. Mm. On most days, you're going to need a return time for Canopio's Cafe inside Super Nintendo World. And to get one, you have to go to the restaurant inside Super Nintendo World. However, if you're there early enough, you may be able to just walk right in. Now they do run out of these pretty quickly. So just keep that in mind. And if you do get one, you might be waiting a few hours before you can even go into the cafe. Have some food in your belly just in case, or go to the Yoshi snack stand because you don't need a timed entry or anything for that. Green shell, calzone, it's, there's yakisoba and cheese inside. This is nice. If you have dietary requirements, the USJ website has information on food allergies and also vegetarian dishes, along with non-pork and non-alcoholic dishes. Oh, <laughs> has a little bit of a cook get a spot for the parade at least an hour before showtime so you get the perfect spot now usually the no limit parade that has pokemon and mario kart in it peanuts and other wonderful characters it usually starts at two o'clock so you want to try and get your spot around 1 p.m i do recommend getting a spot in front of terminator that way you can watch the parade twice because it loops around <laughs> And remember, explorers, enjoy yourself. It's easy to get overwhelmed while trying to stick to your carefully laid out plan. When I feel overwhelmed, I slow down, I take a few deep breaths and remind myself that we're here to have fun. And I'm here to reassure you that you'll be fine. It'll all work out in the end. Not all plans work out. You know, you have to be a little flexible. Things happen. But trust me, you're going to have a wonderful time. Explorers, I want to help you plan the perfect trip. So in addition to everything you just watched, we also have our guidebooks up on our website. I'll put a link in the description. Or you can just head to tdrexplorer.com slash books. We also have our Patreon, where we have a community of explorers there helping each other out plan their trips. So you can go and check that out as well. Link in the description. And don't go anywhere just yet. I have a video up here, something else, I don't know, I'll decide when I'm editing this video. <laughs> what to put up here to help you plan your trip to Universal Studios Japan. All right, explorers, I'll see you in the next one. Bye. 
over knees. Oh, God.